Okay, let's get started. Uh, good morning, everyone, again. Uh, my name is Varun Malik. I'm the CEO of a consulting firm called Consolidon. Uh, Consolidon is a new age consulting firm. Uh, new age in the sense that we didn't take the traditional approach and hire a lot of consultants to staff on client projects. But instead, we partnered with a lot of boutique consulting firms, marketing agencies, boutique law firms, et cetera, and they became our teams. Uh, what this allowed us to do is uh, grow very quickly in terms of number of consultants. We, uh, we started operations in 2017, and by the end of 2019, we already had 500 consultants. We delivered about 200 consulting projects uh, across the GCC region. Um, in 2020, uh, uh, of course, uh, you know, we were placed for very high growth. Uh, we were very excited, like everyone else as well, about the prospects that 2020 brought. But unfortunately, as you all know, 2020 didn't turn out the way it was supposed to. Um, so what we uh, decided to do with a little bit of the extra capacity that we had uh, was spend at least 20% our, of our time, uh, you know, after we recovered from the initial shock, um, spend 20% of our time uh, on initiatives that uh, help the economy get back on track. So one of the things we did was uh, we got business leaders across the GCC region to come in and help micro businesses and small businesses get back on track. Um, that was uh, an interesting project called the Superheroes Project, which we're still running. In 2021, what we decided to do was also start helping slightly larger organizations. And that's the, uh, you know, that's why we started this summit, a seven day summit called Connected Insights. It's a series of panel discussions and webinars uh, brought to you by experts like uh, the team uh, from eDesign here today, Ahmed and Mohammed. We're doing this, like I said, over a seven day period. Uh, so I welcome you to attend this talk and, of course, other talks. Please feel free to interact during this discussion. We've, uh, we've made you all panelists so that you can uh, switch on your video, you can ask questions during the discussion, um, as well as uh, please look out for the giveaways on the chat. So there are a few giveaways that we'll give on the chat uh, during this discussion. Uh, so please do look out for those. So that's about to start with uh, his uh, his talk, I'm looking forward, Ahmed. Should Thank I start, you. Ahmed, or you can start uh, as you like? Good morning, everyone. Go, Hi, good go morning, ahead. everyone. This is Mohanad, Head of Business Development at eDesign. Uh, so our uh, uh, first of all, I would like to thank everyone for attending this webinar. Uh, our speaker today is uh, my colleague, Ahmed Toiba. He is... Uh, 18 years experience in technology and digital marketing and co-founder. He will be talking today as a CEO for uh, e-design and uh, I'll keep the mic for him to start the webinar about uh, how to increase your sales over your e-commerce. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you everyone for joining. Um, uh, today, the, uh, what we're going to end up with is uh, you understanding what, uh, what you need to do what, or what the potential possibility of e-commerce. Um, and uh, in the first part, we'll jump over some statistics, number. Uh, we go into more things we need to consider. And then by the end, we go to uh, several examples. Uh, so we can show you uh, how things was uh, was done and the results uh, uh, numbers we got from these uh, different approaches we, we, we talk. So one of the important things you need to understand today is uh, is e-commerce is just is just the beginning. A lot of people consider that uh, e-commerce is uh, when they do, who, uh, they will reach there. But usually e-commerce is only a tool and it only represents um, a sort of 10 to 
to 20% of your entire business operation that you need to consider uh, and so on. Um, um, here are some several statistics that help or that uh, shows uh, how how e-commerce really uh, um, happened to, uh, during the pandemic. For example, it's estimated that 95% uh, of the purchases will be made online by uh, 25%. Uh, on a global level, it is um, uh, 861 billion in sales. Uh, I will show you here more, more data related to the MENA region. So in 2019, e-commerce sales were around uh, $34 billion, uh, and it's uh, increased by 20% in 2020. Um, however, the total retail sales are expected to increase, uh, or actually expected to increase 20, 21%. Um, this is and the 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 online part of it is I think today uh, in the range of eighteen percent to twenty five percent of the entire retail business today. Um, um, the web penetration is uh, very considered seventy one percent is very high compared to uh, other uh, international markets, which is some of them are below uh, twenty or ten. That is enlightening us to see the huge opportunity that we have in the field of e-commerce. Um, so e-commerce is not an option anymore. It's part of everything we do. Everyone is depending on their mobile to purchase anything, to search for anything. So if they find what they're looking for in, in, in the right pricing, the right information, uh, 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 with the with the optimized user experience, this will happen. Um, usually, the e-commerce are uh, crucial for the future businesses today and nowadays. So everyone is trying to do the digital transformation in all and most of their doing. Um, and um, and in what happened in 2020, a lot of things that was not norm to for people to buy online, now it's becoming more. People start buying medicines, grocery, a lot of grocery, and have seen this uh, a totally different experience. But, um, now, several techniques we need to consider when you're considering the e-commerce conversion today. Uh, the first thing is you need to always have the right tools in order to monitor what is happening between your competitor and analyze their data, analyze your own data, and helping this give you an insight to improve and make sure you're, you're leveraging the latest features available in the platform of online selling and the technology in, 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 in engaging your customer or providing them with a better experience. One of the, the second point, which is important, the persona identifying and categorizing your audience on a different level, understanding what do they like, um, the age, the gender, the interest, even the tone of language, um, the relevant images that they're expecting to see and so on. Uh, and not only that, this is all you need to consider to adding it in a platform sort of like a CRM or any whatever platform you're gonna use in order to record all these data. And then you leverage this data in building your content, optimizing your information online. Um, the third point is uh, converting your physical experience into a virtual one. And nowadays there is a lot of tools, stuff, stuff like uh, uh, beacons and uh, um, in, in, um, that you usually install in your um, offline store. So you can track how people are interacting with your own product so you can see in which shelf they're standing for for and for how long and from which cell they jump to a different one and you can all of these data you can uh, in, um, in, in uh, connect it with your e online e-commerce data in order to provide them with a better experience uh, one of the other things as well, for example, uh, considering a VR experience or even augmented reality experience. If you have seen in the fashion industry, a lot of, uh, for example, there is a mirror 
that enable you to change your dress or look immediately just by swiping or choosing different experience, uh, using a VR to visualize yourself in a different type of clothes or shoes or whatever you name it. And all of these is just interacting to give uh, the customer as real as, as real as possible experience in order to make the buying decision much easier. The fourth, uh, the fourth point is the cross channeling, uh, which is your availability in everywhere. If you can sell on, uh, for example, in your website, you need to be, for example, in Amazon, all the other uh, provider like Noon, like Sug, and you name it, these, there, there are many different ones. I'm not sure, I'm sure you have experienced this in mean, a lot of, for example, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Uh, when you see a post that immediately you can uh, click on it and you can uh, go and purchase it instead of going and having to search for that product. And this is sort of a user experience one. And the first, which is the most important one, is the user experience and user interface and your customer journey online and how to improve it and how this will uh, dramatically change. But sometimes when the customer lands in your landing page and he does not find the, what he's looking for and um, or even find the right link, uh, this is putting back five, four steps. Even the website performance will uh, backfire on you. Um, so how to fuel this? Uh, so market and competitor, you know, you need always to uh, consider uh, analysis, not just Excel, but to survive today. So um, and then uh, what is good feature and what is bad feature by by even trying doing something called uh, A/B testing. Your customer the a user review and customer review is nowadays essential. Uh, the advanced e-commerce platform today, they connect the user review with their Google review platform in order to be like an open book, very transparent. The wait and load time of your pages or your website and your mobile application. A lot of people save money on investment, investment when they go to e-commerce. Uh, excuse me, but the small details like this, the performance, it 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 dramatically changed. Uh, I've I've attended uh, a Google um, workshop, uh, I think in 2018, and um, we were around maybe 200 uh, attendees at that time. Um, and during the break session, they asked us uh, to. And then uh, they did analysis on all the websites for every attendees of their um, uh, speed loading. And they figured out that the average uh, loading speed uh, for, for the website of attendees was around eight seconds. Uh, and that was shocking for everyone. And it's, uh, the right loading speed should be in the range of uh, three seconds uh, to load because the customer now when he uh, try to go, for example, in Google for, and then find one website that actually loaded very faster beyond the other one. Uh, the other one most probably lost the opportunity immediately. Um, the uh, the fifth uh, point is you need to consider is the customer service, uh, and the customer service is. Um, the ability to make your customer life as lean as possible, as easy as possible, as uh, uh, tense as possible. Um, and you can find this practice happening in Amazon, for example. So they don't like it, immediately can return it. No one even gonna argue with you. Uh, even if you find something damaged in the box, you can return it, no one, and you get refunded. Uh, and in, in some cases, even they, they will let tell you, keep your product and they will send you a, a totally uh, new product. And this is what's called customer service. And um, because the experience this <clears throat> will be immediately shared by the customer because they, it's not an order to experience it everywhere. And, um, and the last one is uh, related to the uh, user interface and user experience. 
and the performance of your uh, website or mobile application. Even today, there is too many platforms in the e-commerce industry and in the mobile technology, which one you should choose uh, on, uh, based on your business um, needs and so on. Okay. <clears throat> now, uh, customer, uh, the CRM or customer relation uh, shift management. Uh, like this is always to stay in touch with your customer. Always send them the right update based on the right profile they're sharing with you uh, and you're recording this data from them. Um, uh, the more data you record in their profile, the better uh, optimized the experience will be. Uh, and um, I'm sure you have um, in the e-commerce industry, you have seen a lot of things that they show something only relevant, relevant to you or something you have looked into, into before or similar products like uh, and we always use tools to analyze the customer behavior. So how they interact with the page, in which area they stand, they stand a lot, and which links they uh, click on, and why, and what is the time they stay in every single page, and so on. How long does it take the entire process? All these data help you to improve uh, your customer journey. <clears throat> and when you understand your customer profiling and uh, Optimize your uh, reaching to other customers similar to the customer that you are already succeeding with, with uh, and that's how you usually grow. Um, here are some five different benefits from the CRM. Usually, for every dollar you spend, you make uh, eight, uh, eight extra dollars, uh, which is uh, like this is almost eight multiples. Um, and the, um, the statistic says that uh, the CRM usually boosts sales by 29%, productivity by 34%, forecast accuracy by 42%, um, and sometimes increasing the revenue uh, by 41%. Uh, and that's because you're rec recording the data and seeing all the information and making decisions based on that. Let's see, for example, here's um, a small uh, story about uh, Uber. So um, uh, Uber, when they start being in everywhere and every continent and every country, um, they start to improve the experience of their CRM. So uh, the CRM helped them uh, help Uber to extract data from people engaging with brands on social media. So they're seeing who's integrating with them and trying to reach them from different channels in order to increase the conversion. Um, so now they can even reply to his comp uh, uh, customer complaint and track their interaction with the public from uh, different dashboards. And they can see all of this because of the CRM data they are getting on everyone. They have their own loyalty program and reward, which is um, you, get, you enable you to earn points every time you use their rides uh, and you redeem them across different services or a different range of services. Um, and that help, uh, help Uber to uh, incentivize customers to keep relaying on its brand more and more and more and contributing to branch out in different cities. Uh, one of the other experiences is the uh, uh, virtual um, VR, if you have experienced any of these tools in uh, even in the gaming industry or so on. So now <clears throat> in the coming two to three years, we're expecting a lot of um, VR experience um, in most of the retail industry to improve our experience, to get us to get more into details or in touch with the product we are looking for or interested in, and that will help us to improve uh, uh, help us the, uh, to improve the conversion and the brand recognition and, and so on. And even um, agencies today try to <clears throat> make the VR a sort of um, a story experience um, uh, and more of a visualization experience in order to improve the conversion. Um, and here is an example of how EK is doing this. So EK is doing using this in order to give you a virtual tour of their entire showroom 
so you can use it and go left and right and see the product and go into their details or using your uh, VR screen, for example. Uh, so now let's uh, consider about the cross-channel channeling uh, and how it's important to uh, increase your uh, sort of engagement and sales on generating new sales. So the channels we have, the social media channels that you need to consider and how you connect the, your e-commerce directly with them. And the other point is um, the sales platform or the marketplaces you can add your product in and how you manage the different pricing, the different strategy in promotion, in jumping and leveraging. And a lot of people, for example, use these marketplaces as a promotion later on to refer their customer back to their website while they're maintaining themselves in, in a different channel. So um, in, the, in the previous era, we used to open offline showroom. Now we open different websites and be an available different markets uh, online which enable us to increase the conversion. Um, so 73% of marketeers said cross-channel marketing had a major impact in conversion rate. Uh, for example, 30% um, uh, of using email and newsletter and keeping the customer update about their product, about their visited product or abundant cards and so on. Um, 20, 20% of, for example, website, 12% using search engine optimization and how this helped them uh, or help your website to rank on the first uh, page uh, on search engine when your e uh, uh, the search engine is optimized. Um, one of the creating, uh, the winning strategy is adapting content according to each platform. Sometimes, for example, now um, I'm sure uh, a lot of you are aware of uh, Snapchat and TikTok and how these different platforms have a totally different experience or lifestyle that you need to consider uh, a different content for the audience uh, from this uh, perspective. So, um, so having a different content that adapts to the different user, this is very uh, essential. And um, understanding this, you understand this by understanding your audience, every single channel, and this helps you to improve the uh, conversion as well. Delivering consist consistent messaging across all the platforms. So the content is different, but the message is almost one. Um, 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 integrating the CRM with all your channels and platform. So it is all you're trying to use one, uh, using one data hub to integrate all your data accordingly. Uh, aligning your content with the um, specific buyer journey. So I have uh, defining certain people and I, um, I create a certain journey. For example, people, I can build my website or my application that customers coming from from the Saudi Arabia, for example, will see a totally different uh, product and they can go to a different experience than people, uh, for example, in UAE or people in Cairo, for example, or Egypt. Uh, maybe people in Europe like uh, tend to see more technical details and they, play, they like more visualized uh, content. Uh, this has helped them in, uh, this is the type of, um, uh, content you need to consider. Uh, and um, when you have all these data, you need to be able to determine which channel is cost is lower to customer acquisition. And this is when you build um, your own numbering platform in order to see each number and its value accordingly. Uh, and the last thing, analyzing all these data and your insights and try to keep improving accordingly. Um, here, for example, how Land Rover, Land Rover uh, use marketing campaign and different channels. So a slide to the luxury vehicle brand uh, created and um, experience across different channels. Um, they are using, for example, Google and YouTube and other social media. Um, they try to focus on their campaign in something called Bread for Adventure. So that's the focus. Land, uh, they always took visual and adjusted them to fit their websites and social media ads. 
uh, this is how they adapt. The cross-channel effort resulted in 100 million impression and increase uh, in 10% uh, increase in customer retention rate. Um, further resulted founding online leads from digital channel effort on um, now accounting for 15% of the total brand sales. And this is the effect of uh, this strategy they are following. Uh, now, part of the important thing is the UX and UI, and this is really crucial for most of the businesses today to succeed in the uh, online uh, and to be ahead of their competition. So you need to consider improving your customer journey, increase your conversion rate, always um, enhance your brand credibility, uh, boost your return of investment. This is things you need to consider because the UX and UI will help you to improve the data over here. And um, in a while, we'll show you, share with you some of that. Um, so investing in, in UX and UI, a lot of people think that, okay, the designer is um, going to take five, three uh, days to design uh, a user experience journey and get into every details and every information. But usually, the fact, sometimes the user experience design uh, it takes uh, sometimes to three to four months to just designing UX. There is no visual, nothing. It's just how we're gonna place the journey from where the customer to, uh, he will go from this page to that page. And I remember my last project I worked on, um, we designed almost more than 1000 schemes of only user experience. And it took us uh, from um, October till March. Um, and that the 75% uh, of users determine that credibility of an organization is based on the website design and performance. So uh, this is their first impression they get. And 90% of the visitor, uh, visitors to a website are likely or less likely to return if they have encountered a lag uh, or a slowness in the experience of the website or mobile application. Uh, noon UX and UI. So Noon had a minor problem. Uh, one of them was the checkout process. Nevertheless, the issue was a minor user seems to abandon their cart during the checkout. Well, the objective was uh, they need to improve the conversion and click through rate by optimizing the checkout process and their product listing. By investing time in benchmark uh, marking and researching, um, a designer was found that distracted and confused the user from the checkout process. And this is, for example, if you can see that it's, it's quite small. Uh, before, in every product, there, is, there was a lot of data and there is no easy clean uh, add, add button or precious button. And in the new design, uh, in the new design, <clears throat> This, this problem is solved. So they can add multiple products, increase the ads of, uh, if they add one, to one or two or more or three items, uh, the price is much clearer than before, the layout of the data and this, uh, the result of it. Uh, big data was used to take decision in that uh, experience to optimize the whole experience. For example, whether or not the customer retention button should be placed above the fold or 60% uh, of uh, the top sites, for example, have it in the top side, had their checkout button above. Um, the fold on their mobile cart, um, um, what I mean that uh, the cart is always in the, uh, in the upper of the page and this is making it easier. And now they consider it in the bottom because the, your thumb, where is it standing when you're holding the mobile? Um, okay. Um, six key features we go through uh, quickly over the uh, top app and mobile and uh, app and website experience. 86% uh, of website visitors want to see information about products on homepage website. So they're expecting to see everything on the homepage when they land. Uh, one of the important points is the efficiency. So mobile load times and bounce rate increases, for example, um, this is the, we have one to three seconds 
only 32% of the industry. Uh, one to 10 seconds we have, uh, it's very high. And this is what we need to keep improving um, uh, that. Clarity, uh, for example, Banana Republic takes uh, uh, the clarity of the buying experience very seriously. They go so far to uh, explain exactly what just happened when the user click add to cart. Um, and this helps them to um, make it much more clear to the customer. Uh, to avoid confusion and abundant cards and other uh, drop-off uh, or bounce rate. Uh, filtering, the, the, your ability, the ability of the customer to reach to the product they are looking for. The longer you put off optimization your site for speed, the more customer you will lose uh, to a faster competitive site. Reviews, 95% uh, of the user rela relied on reviews to evaluate the product or learn more about it. And I'm sure you have experienced this when you buy something from online, you're not sure that is this product good or bad unless you have tried it before. Uh, you try to search for people feedback and read about it and this is will uh, make your decision by the end, uh, whether to buy it or not to buy it. And, some, and, and sometimes actually the same product you can, for example, in market search, you're gonna find the same product, but different pricing. Uh, but one of them have a good review and the other one have a bad review and you, you were willing to pay extra penny uh, because of the good review. Uh, personalization, the benefit of personalization, we spoke about this uh, three days ago in a different webinar. So increase of 20% in sales, because of ex personalized experience, 80% uh, of shoppers are more likely uh, to buy from a company that offers personalized experience, and 77% of consumers have chosen, recommended, or paid more for a brand that provides a personalized experience. Now let's jump into uh, actual implementation and, and data. So, um, you can see the difference. So this is this is a client that um, we did this exercise with them. Um, so we started by doing um, a UX and UI analysis of the entire and performance analysis. We came with a list of things. We we took the website to a totally different level. We solved all the problems with the UX and UI and performance, and we we did a testing period in the from March 1st to March 31st in 2019. So we spent an ad of worth of 6,400. What we did get in the testing phase, we got only 15, uh, 15 purchases and the cost of purchase was almost 430. Now, after Okay, after the um, uh, three months from um, from in from June first to June thirty first, we have um, spent uh, seven hundred and six uh, seven thousand six hundred, and we um, we increased the sales uh, or the purchase from uh, one hundred uh, one hundred six uh, from fifteen to one hundred and sixty four, and the cost per purchase was forty six. Uh, 0.6. And one year after that, uh, we reached to a spending amount of 83,000. Um, and the total number of sales is around 3,200. And the conversion or return of ad spent is around 13.8%. So for every um, real or dollar you spend, you are getting 13 multiple or 14 multiple. And for example, they spent 80,000 um, 80, and over here they got a total sales of uh, 1.1 million. Okay. This is a summary of what, uh, so just to make the comparison very easier. So the amount spent in the first month is like 6,000. After one year, we spent an ad 83,000 over one year uh, and uh, return of 
um, ad spent is uh, almost below its negative, and now it is almost positive, 14 multiple. The purchasing was 15 items, now it's 3,000. And uh, cost of purchase from 400 almost to 25. Um, and it's even less than 5%. Uh, the total sales from 5,000 to 1.1 million. This is a different example. Uh, so um, the testing phase was from uh, 1st of December to 31st of December. The ad spent was 77K. Uh, um, Purchase is all, almost 1. Uh, 1. 1.163. The, uh, the conversion was in negative. And the cost per conversion is almost for, uh, 477. Now after optimization, uh, in after one month exactly, we're, we, we used to spend 77, now we spent at 81, and then it is now three multiples. We, uh, the, um, the total purchase is 260, and the cost dropped a little bit to 305. Um, um, and uh, after almost, I think, uh, six months, uh, from June to uh, June 1st to June 30th, um, the, the total uh, conversion is almost 31 multiples. So for every uh, dollar they spent, they made 30 multiples and they reached sales of 3.5 million. Uh, and this is the comparison. So we start with the first month, uh, 77 in spending over here. And after year, 52 in spending from uh, point eight in negative to thirty multiples in 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 return of uh, in, in return of ad spent, and from sixty three in sales to three point five million. This is a totally different uh, experience because it's not always happen uh, the way we like. So, for example, the first month it was one point eight. We improved it to. Uh, uh, to 18, I think this is the missing, and then it's a little bit dropped to 15.3. Um, uh, uh, but the the bottom line have totally changed. So now when they're spending 40,000, they're making 740. When they spend 270, they made 4 million, uh, almost 15 times. Now things to consider, this is, this is a design or user experience or user interface before uh, optimization. This is how it used to look like. And uh, this is what we improved. So over here, uh, you have, for example, multiple products, um, current price, previous price, uh, other things they can attract their attention, uh, side scrolling, very clear messaging in the beginning. And this is uh, an experience. Over here, for example, the um, uh, the web version, how it looks like before and after. So what what was done over here? These images was increased and put in the bottom. So the customer only focus on the product details in this area. Multiple product details have been added over here, and then other items uh, relevant to the product is added as well. Um, okay. So this. From, uh, from December 2020 to January 2021, uh, customer retention was almost below 1%, a negative uh, 0.98. And then after the optimization, it's increased to 1.28. Uh, and the return of ad spend uh, is almost uh, 30, increased by 30.6%. 30, 30 in summary, um, this is uh, e-commerce is very essential today. You need to consider uh, optimizing your experience. You need to make sure you're using the right tools for your e-commerce. There is a lot of tools over there. Uh, you need to make sure what you're using helps you to, com uh, to increase your conversion. Uh, and you measure every single data that you need. Um, and from this, you can move on. And um, I would like to thank you very much. And if you have any questions, I will be happy to answer and uh, negotiate with you. Thank you, Ahmed.
Any questions? Anyone? I think you can mute yourself, right? Do you have any question mm. that I can help you to improve your e-commerce? How many of you actually have an e-commerce or managing e-commerce in their business? I think you all can unmute yourself if you have something to say. Um, if not, you can uh, type in the chat box as well. I yeah, I can. Answer. Yeah, I can just uh, tell a little bit about uh, myself. Uh, I have like a legal ed tech company. Uh, now, I guess the issue is that, uh, of course, my market is really niche, and and so uh, you know it's a little difficult uh, to sometimes drive traffic to the website and. Uh, uh, and in terms of the numbers, uh, that's the challenge because it's so niche and, and to grow as well, uh, I've realized that, okay, maybe I need to get a lot more content. And uh, so I'm just trying to understand uh, when it comes to a niche topic, do we, do we uh, like, is the marketing, mm -hmm. like, a, do we need, need to take a different approach when it comes to marketing? So when you have a niche audience um, online, if you, if you can, Figure a part of this niche audience online, then you can capitalize and keep uh, reaching to the similar people to these and keep improving from that. And and one by one, it will uh, it will you will be able <coughs> easily reach to the mass uh, customer from uh, from your own niche. So the experience we go through the, for example, the online advertising and so on. Um, uh, is when we when we validate who are the people actually buying and, and clicking on the ad and then doing the purchase by the end. So we understand their characteristic, their information, their demo, demographic and so on. And then we try to find other people similar based on that because these people who actually succeed, they click on the ad and then, for example, move to a purchase. And then you keep uh, trying to increase this uh, radius from... Uh, and what's the best uh, media for, let's say, advertising? Is it more like, I know, because like, let's say right now, most of the target audience is lawyers. So would it be like LinkedIn or YouTube or uh, Your target audience where again? Uh, the lawyers. A lawyer. Uh, so, so which countries? They're actually all over the world. So it's, okay. it's not a specific country. Yeah. So LinkedIn helps you to provide, to actually... Uh, pinpoint select lawyers because they have mm -hmm. their title over there. Uh, however, uh, you, you can, you, when you build your database of information, you can use this database to reach your, your audience online on any platform. And then you can focus on what actually converts better for uh, to you or toward you or for you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But, 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 but LinkedIn, is, uh, LinkedIn is the first. Uh, and also, Ahmed, I think it will depend on each country because the, the demography for the lawyers in each country have a different mm -hmm. age, different interest in the channel, uh, and many other things. True. True. So, no, no. So, yeah, so, so that's why you need to, uh, usually, uh, when you do a testing campaign, you start um, uh, trying all the platforms, and then you, you, you distribute your budget to the one that is succeeding, that's creating more conversion to you. Mm -hmm. So for example, if you have, if, let's say if you have 10,000 to spend $10,000, so you allocate, for example, $1,000 for testing and you test which one is generating the higher um, conversion, you push, uh, uh, you push everything towards uh, this uh, channel. 
No, no, that no, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you so much for the insights. You know, I, I have one one thing to uh, to add for you. Uh, one of our experience with the pharmaceutical, because they have also a niche market, and it's only doctors. They start doing um, a specific grouping over uh, LinkedIn to communicate with these niche people on uh, several topics. So you'll be like an advisor for them, not only trying to sell. Uh, you will start communicating with a group that related to your business, related to this topic, and interested on this. And people start joining these groups. It's a private group, so starting a group on uh, over LinkedIn is something good for your business. Mm -hmm. No, no, that's a good idea. In fact, I've created one group on LinkedIn, so I have to make it a bit more active. Yes. Yeah. Th thanks a lot, Mohanad. Most of the best. Anyone else? Yeah, uh, building on the same on the same question, uh, if uh, can we apply the same concept when you have uh, a B two B, for example? Uh, it's an niche market. Uh, can I build uh, an app, okay, as well as a website to serve B two B, or uh, that's a different uh, a different ball game totally? Um, yes, you can do, uh, because in the end, the, the people who buy in the B2B is like us in the end consumer and the advertising and the campaign and so on, it will, in the end, it will influence them to buy or not to buy, um, uh, usually, but now where your B2B customer are, I had an experience in 2009 when we started the first e-commerce to build. Uh, usually the customer um, uh, at, at, at that time was Mize, if you're all familiar. It, it, it was mainly the business is B2B and a little bit B2C. So they gradually switch everything that they're doing from offline to online. So people start depending on their online platform and so on uh, and moving the experience from uh, the fax and email and so on to purchase everything online. And then what you can do after this experience is is when you are identify the people that most probably to like uh, or most probably like buying from your product and then you use this um, in finding them online in different channels in order to increase the similar like people to purchase from your uh, own b2b uh, businesses uh, even even if they are even if the product is uh... Really, we don't have a physical product. This is more of a service. It's exactly like the previous question, okay? Uh, to be more specifically, uh, we are into the consultancy business, okay? Okay. Uh, and, and the question is, how can we translate what it, whatever is done on the, on the physical product uh, uh, to the service uh, side? Okay. So <clears throat> now uh, we, have, you know, we need to ask different questions. The first one, how do usually your customer reach you? Um, and, uh, um, and identifying this, is it because of word of mouth or because someone else suggested that you need help and this company can help you or people go and search online for uh, the topic they're interested to find help in or research in. This is all uh, different methodology to reach your customer. So understanding how your customer actually thinks in order to validate that you need the, the service of consultation this will help you to. Uh, this is will enable you to ha to be able to provide, for example, maybe you need to do webinars to educate people or potential customers about uh, what you're doing and what uh, value you can solve for them or what challenges you can uh, resolve for them. So this is uh, this is a methodology. You can uh, you can do, um, for example, um, um, an AdWords campaign in order for you to focus on the keywords and terminology that people will um, will use when they're searching to solve their uh, technical or business problem, whatever your consultation can solve or help in. And that will grab them to your website or a different landing page to help you to increase your conversion of the customers and this is, and so on. And then you can use uh, uh, campaign, build campaign uh, on, um, on LinkedIn to create awareness about what you're doing and how you can help them. Uh, you can build a sort of um, 
what you call it, um, like market studies, how how companies in different industry use mm-hmm. consultation in this area, uh, and how it affected their bottom lines and so on. Uh, so when your customers or potential customers see this data, uh, they will eager to reconsider um, uh, such type of services. Okay. Okay. Excellent. Shukran. Shukran. Have fun. Take a lot. And I think, Ahmed, for uh, non-tangible service like uh, consultation, I think we have experience in training. When they start training, the training should be physical, and this is mandatory. Nowadays, the huge websites that uh, doing online training are selling online, and it's intangible service. So the experience for these people and behavior change from day to day. Yes. Anyone else? If you wish, you can write your question on the Q and A field. So I think we have still five minutes. And I think Ahmed, you are you, you are finished, right? Yeah, nothing more. Unless someone have questions. So we'll give it one more minute if someone have any question, or you can send us and we can answer you later on uh, over email, whatever you want. Yeah, but uh, if possible, your contact details. Uh, sh- sure. Okay, I'll share it. Where can I share it? Um, over the chat, Ahmed, if you wish. Okay. Uh, chat. Okay, everyone, thank you for your time. Uh, I look forward to see you in upcoming webinars and wish you all the best. If you need anything, we're always here. My LinkedIn is here. You can reach me at any time. Thank you, Ahmed. Just give give them a second so they can copy the message from the chat. Thank you, guys. Yeah, thank you so much, Emma and Manat, for this session. And um, thank you for those who asked questions, participated. And if you have any more questions, uh, please reach out to Emma um, in his email, which he shared on the chat. And um, have a great day, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you guys. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.